Nixon, for example, um, has made some, I think, valuable and true, uh, worthwhile and reasonable criticisms of IBJJF and the nature of how jujitsu has changed in the 20, 30 years since he started teaching here in the States. And having witnessed that evolution, I understand what he's talking about. I feel like I understand what he's talking about, having talked to him about it, and I agree with him. So when I started jujitsu in the, in the 90s, it was very much about fighting. Not the self-defense like somebody's going to put you in a wrist lock or something, you know, what do you do with a drunk guy in the street? There was that, but it was about fighting. Everything we were doing was related to Vale Tudo. The crossover to MMA was, that's what we were doing. We were doing MMA on the ground, basically. And, and there was always slaps. Howder, when he first would come to Oregon, I don't think we ever rolled where he didn't hit me in the head at least once or twice. It was just part of what we did. Fighting was what jiu-jitsu was about. And then it hyper-specialized. And, and you have schools and people who are training specifically for the IBJJF rules. And in that, in that there's a fear that the, the really fearsome, awesome fighting art of, of Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, will get lost. So I understand his point. The solution that he's advocated for, and what I've seen as far as the, the self-defense tournament he has, is a kata. It, it's two guys to go out and do the self-defense techniques, some of which I like and some of which I don't. There are valuable, solid jujitsu movements in the old Gracie self-defense system. And then there's ones that we both know we've made major improvements on. But, um, but that's not the point. What I'm talking about is a training method. They're literally working against a cooperating opponent the way you would in Aikido. And then you have a panel of judges who score them like you would Kata. And actually, Howder, Chris re refereed one of these matches. And while he's there, he's wondering, why do you need a referee? I don't understand why I have a referee. And, and so no. you have a legitimate problem that I think he's identified. But the solution to it is exactly what we should not do. It will, it will destroy and kill the art. And yet, if we go back, I was thinking about this. If you go back and think about the origin story for every sclerotic tradition, every, every dead pattern martial art, there's some origin story about somebody who was really, really good and didn't want the movements to be lost, quote unquote. So they codified it and some pattern that get, then gets repeated. And then the students after that have to memorize and repeat the pattern in front of their coaches. So it just seems like a very human solution. That's not a solution. It's actually, it's actually how things devolve. Um, but anyway, I just find it kind of fascinating because to me, the obvious answer is you just have to do the jujitsu the way we did jujitsu back in the nineties. Not okay. as well, obviously not, not as, not as healthier, but with the same. Right. Well, so a very small percentage of our students are going to compete and a very small percentage of our students are going to a much smaller percent of our students are going to laser focus on winning IBJJF gold. Right. And there is so much information out there on the internet on, on all these, all these techniques, all these things, all these games and stuff that they are going to show up in your gym regardless. Right. But I think they are very healthy. And I think even if the guy who's laser focused on getting into the you know winning gold at the IBJJF is working lapels, lapel guards, things like that. Right. Worm guard. It is as long as the the school itself is focusing on fundamentals and training alive, I think it's very healthy. No, I completely agree with that. I always just let that go. And there's always somebody that's right. been the newest thing off of YouTube. Exactly. So it's not, not necessary. Um, and because if we just trained like we used to, mm -hmm. then I think one, we're excluding people because there yeah. are a lot of people who don't, you know, so we're excluding people. I don't mean who can, in the room. No, I know. I understand. But even just, even the idea of just, striking with all your you know most of your jiu-jitsu classes is going to alienate a group of people in touch with the hand right sure i guess 
Um, and I'm not against it. We do it. Yeah. Um, but I, I, it can shrink yeah, to the no, point. So like if I disagree with that. we, so if we were just together training, no gi BJJ with strikes, we would get amazing at no gi BJJ with strikes. And we would be able to fight in any arena and defend ourselves and, and roll with people without strikes. Right. But there is a fun part of the of evolution because so many of those matches are going to be closed guard defending versus ground and pound. Sure. Right. So I I like the idea. I'm not gonna I don't do it necessarily, but I like the idea of having that evolutionary or not No, oh, I, I I completely agree with you and I don't disagree. And and you know um already know that my answer to that is, you know, it's an, it's an irrelevant question as far as I'm concerned. I'm not going to get in even into a debate of gear and OV, gi, because if you're focused on fundamentals, like we do at SPG, our students can cross over to any of them. And we're going to yep. have some that are going to want, there's going to be a few people that want to do IBJJF and that's awesome. And a few people that want to fight and that's awesome. And a whole bunch more who just want to, after they get past the first part of self-defense and become a blue belt, purple belt, it's about the love of, and community and everything else. So a hundred percent, what I'm referring to is, is not any change in our gyms or uh, anything related to you. What I'm saying is when you have somebody that identifies a very legitimate problem. No, I guess that, wait, so freeze there. I don't know if it's a legitimate problem. That's my point. So he is solving something I see. that I, I don't think needs to be solved. And the way he is solving it is probably because it doesn't need to be solved. Well, don't you think though, to some extent, <clears throat> some of the, the fighting aspects of jujitsu have given way to, they're, they're not as common as they were certainly in the nineties. The, the sure. less emphasis on being able to defend yourself against a wrestler, being able to defend yourself against strikes and the fundamentals of jujitsu that make jujitsu a good fighting art. And then it becomes more about, you know, a point system and, and gaining advantage. And I'm playing devil's advocate for you. No, I don't, no, I'm with you. It's a huge they, problem. But I do understand his criticism of, and his fear that the jujitsu that he loved and that, you know, he pioneered would get lost over time. I just find it ironic that the solution turns out to be a worse training method. Right. And the funny thing is the real solution is making sure that the core fundamentals exactly. are always taught and taught properly. And we learn how to, and people learn how to drill them properly with aliveness. Yes. And then it's not a is, problem. Then it's not a problem. Yes. Now, that, that is an issue for a lot of places because there are a lot of black belts who are black belts and run schools because they were very good. Yeah. But when they replicate, are they replicating the solid core fundamentals the right way? And I don't believe so. Right. So I don't right. think the issue is necessarily IBJJF and points. Yeah. Now, we could have a discussion about if it is possible to have a school that tries to balance both things at the same time. That would be an interesting conversation. Um, we at SBG has solved Hicks's problem. I think that what you just... Well, I, don't know if Hicks, I don't know if there is a... Right, SBG solved it because we never let it become a problem. Right, because if you're focused on fundamentals and you have a live drilling... It's a non-existent. It's not a problem. You're like you're going to be able to cater to everybody, and the core of the art stays solid. But it must be there. Must I guess my broader point is there must be something in in us that seeks to uh, codify. I can't think of a better word for it right now, but to preserve things when we get a, when we're afraid that they're going to get lost in a manner that's not fully alive. You know. 
I think it must well, be you, tendency. Such a common must be such a common occurrence because I do believe that's what's happened to just about every traditional martial art along the way. 